Today we're going to talk about translating verbal expressions into algebraic expressions. So there is a form on Canvas that shows you some prior words, some words that you see often and how they can be used. And I've just placed the key on there so there's some words that can mean addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or equals. Um, there's probably a few other ones. I've added a few on there, but those are a good thing to have. If you're having trouble with not sure what kind of operation is supposed to be happening, that's a good place to start when you're translating words into algebraic expressions. Remember that expressions do not have an equal sign. These are not equations. These are expressions. So we're going to be using what we know um, about words to translate them into expressions. So the first one is the sum sum of a number and six. So the first thing we need to think of is what do we know about the word sum? So sum is one of those words that mean add. So when we think about sum, we're adding something together. So in this case, we have a sum of a number, we don't know that number, and six. So if we think about the sum, we know that that means plus or adding. And we know that we're adding a number. We don't know what that's called, so we can call it a variable. I'm going to call it n for a number. You can call it x or whatever you want, but I'm going to call it n. And then I know that the word 6 is 6. So I'm taking the sum of a number and 6. So this is what it would look like, n plus 6. And it doesn't matter because this is addition. I could even write this as 6 plus n. Can't do that if it's subtraction. So number 2, the difference... So we've got to think about what difference means. The difference is subtraction, and we again have a number and two. So we have n and we have two, but we're finding the difference between them, a number and two. So number comes first, so n minus two. We can't switch these around unless we do a negative two plus n, and most of the time you wouldn't remember to do that. All right, number three. The product, so we've got to think about what product means. That means multiplication. So we're now we're going to be multiplying, so I'm going to use my little dot, of a number and 5. So we can think about that as n times 5, 5 times n. We also, because we're using coefficients and we're going into algebra, we write it as the coefficient 5 times n when they're side by side. All right, number four, quotient. Quotient is division. So when we see the word quotient, we know that this means division. And again, we have a number and four. Now, these are the ones that trick people up the most um, when you're doing division. We don't use the little division sign like we did when we were younger, like this one here, and say a number and four. We, whatever comes first, we can write it on top as a fraction and four on the bottom. So these are exactly the same thing. And that brings us to our next one, which is a ratio. Ratio and quotient are the same thing. So a ratio of number and four is actually going to look exactly the same. Whatever comes first is our number, it's unknown, and four. So that's how we would write that expression. All right, number six. Six more than, more than would be meaning it's getting bigger. So six more than a number. Again, if our number is unknown, we'll call it n. And then six more than that, we're going to be adding six to that. So n plus six. Six more than something. All right, number seven. Seven less than, less than is taking away but we're taking seven less than something. So that something is the number seven, and we're taking away seven from something. So our number minus seven. Now be careful with this next one. It looks very similar to seven, and it's seven less a number. So it's not less than, it's seven less a number. So it's seven less a number. So we are actually going to be taking a number from 7. So it will be 7 minus n. Okay. All right, number 9. 9 decreased. The word decrease means to get smaller. So we know we're going to be subtracting some kind of operation. 
9 decreased by a number. So 9 is being decreased. So 9 comes first by a number, 9 minus something. Now let's get into a little bit more complex ones. So twice a number, twice means 2, and a number is our unknown. So we can think about we're doing 2 times something, or we can write it as a coefficient of 2n. So we have twice a number. So we can do 2 times a number. Number 11, 3 times a number subtracted from 10. So subtracted we know is going to be a subtraction. 3 times something, a number, but it's subtracted from 10. So that means 10 is going to go first, and we're subtracting 3 times the number. 5 added, so we have an added, we have the number 5, to the product, we know that product means multiplication, of 9 and a number. So the product is of 9 and a number. So that's our product there. And we have added 5 to it. So 9n plus 5. All right, 6 less than. So we're taking 6 away from something because we're doing 6 less than something. So we know we're going to be taking 6 away. Less than the quotient. Quotient, remember, is division of a number and four. Remember what comes first goes as our numerator. So a number and four, six less than the quotient of a number and four. Number 14, the sum of x and y. So we can use different variables that can tell us those variables. We, again, we know what sum is, so we know that's adding x and y. We could also write this y plus x because addition, it doesn't matter what order we put them in. Number 15, the quotient of 3 and a number. Remember, quotient is division, so I always go to put my fraction line under this division. Whatever comes first goes on top and a number. All right, number 16, two-thirds of a number. So that's what we don't know, but we know we're taking two-thirds of something. That's multiplication. So two-thirds of a number is... That means something's being done to it. It is being subtracted. So this amount is being subtracted from 3. All right, number 17, the product. Again, that's multiplication of 3 and... Now, this one's a little tricky. we got to think about this. We're taking the product of something and something else. Product means multiplication. So we can think about it this way. We have something times something. Well, first thing is 3 and 2 less than a number. So 2 less than a number. So we're actually multiplying 3 times n minus 2. So to clean that up, we would say 3 on the outside. We wouldn't have to use parentheses for both. Same thing, but it looks a little cleaner. Number 18, the product, again, that's multiplication, of y and 3. So product of y and 3, this and tells us what we're doing with the products. So 3y, that's the product, is subtracted. So it's being taken away from something. So it's being subtracted from 2 thirds of means multiplication, 2 thirds of x. So 2 thirds x minus 3y. Number 19, c squared. So c squared take a c and square it, plus the product of, of what? 8 and x. So 8x and then plus 9. Number 20, 2 fifths of the sum. So 2 fifths of the sum. Sum of what? Sum of 5 and x. So let's first think about the sum, 5 plus x, and we're going to do 2 fifths of that. So that's giving us 2 fifths of the sum of this, plus the product of 7 and y. So that one's a little tough. Now we're getting ready to go into setting up 
equations. Now let's talk about setting up equations. So equations, remember, always have an equals. So we're trying to figure out when something's equal to something else. So in this one, my jacket cost twice as much as my shoes. So we'll set up an equation that can help us with that. We don't know what we can call jacket. It's just a variable. It's unknown. We don't know how much that jacket costs. So we'll just call it J. J for jacket. And we'll call S, S for shoes. Now we could call it X and Y just as easily. But the jacket itself, so the jacket, cost twice as much as shoes. So that means the jacket's cost is twice as much as shoes. Number two, the temperature has dropped. So dropped, we're thinking about subtracting. Dropped. 15 degrees since noon, okay? Well, we don't really know what the temperature was at noon, so there's an unknown. We'll just call it N for noon. But we know whatever it was dropped 15 degrees, okay? So whatever was at noon, the temperature was at noon, it is now dropped 15 degrees, and that's the temperature it is now. So maybe we call the temperature now just T. All right, number three. Jill has gained 30 pounds. Gained, we know we're adding. 30 would be 30 since last year. What is her weight now? Well, we don't know how much she weighed then, but we'll call her J for Jill. And whatever it was is whatever it was, is J what she was last year, but she's gained 30 pounds. So plus 30 is now what she weighs now. Okay. All right. Let's talk about a little bit more complex one. 10 less than a number. Okay. So here we go. 10 less than something we know is subtracting and it's less than a number we don't know. Is, is means equals, is something, is three more, so three more than something, we know we're adding three to something, than six times a number. So again, there's that number we don't know. Six times that number. So we have three more than six times a number is... 10 less than a number. Well, we can't say 10 first. We have to say a number and then minus 10 equals 6 times a number plus 3. Number 5. The sum of twice x. So twice x. Twice x would be 2x. And that sum of, this is telling me that we're adding something, 3 times y is, which we know is equal, identical, that means exactly the same, to 9. So twice x and 3 times y, the sum of which is identical to 9. 